how's this experience been so far for you uh, on your path to the NFL? Uh, it's been life changing. It's been an experience I'll never forget. I always dreamed about being here as a child, so the fact that I'm here now is just, it's, it's kind of like a dream. I can only just say I need to pinch myself sometimes. Uh, the people I met, the, the players that I see on TV as far as the head coaches of the NFL teams as well, it's like a dream and I just don't ever want to wake up. What's been the most difficult thing so far for you in terms of preparing for this draft, preparing for not only the Combine, the Texas First Nation game, and now your Pro Day, which is coming up here at Cal? Uh, the biggest thing, if I had to say, would be uh, just getting used to, uh, I would say, the spotlight, the attention. It's a lot of, it's a lot of more attention than I expected. Um, definitely after the Combine, uh, a lot of people always front request you. Uh, people know who you are. To, uh, it's like you got to be on your on your on your best behavior at all times. You're just you're a role model now. So um, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but just getting used to the attention is a little hard for me. Coming from a small school like Cal, uh, which I love, is just is going to be the most challenging part is just getting used to the attention. Do you feel like you get more attention because you're a D2 player rather than some of the D1 players that maybe get overlooked? I feel like I probably still get overlooked compared to some of the guys at the combat. I know some guys like uh, the Honey Badger, Eric Reed, them guys from LSU and Alabama. Uh, a lot of people knew them. People knew me, but not as much as they knew them guys. So I probably still get a little overlooked, but just the fact that I come from a small school in a small town like California and Pittsburgh, it's like in this area, I get a lot of attention. When I'm out of state, not as much, but in this area, yes, a lot of attention. So uh, rewinding a little bit, going back to your younger days, when you're playing uh, football growing up, how, wh what age did you start playing football, and were you always primarily defensive player, or did you play the other side of the ball? Oh man, um, I started playing football around like six or seven, seven years old. Uh, I had a lot of brothers that played. My, uh, my mother's boyfriend actually um, at the time signed me up. Kept saying I need to go do something, sitting around the house. I never really even paid attention to football that much. Just went to a practice or two and it just came natural. And I actually was a running back. Play running back like my first two, three years. Really wasn't big on defense. Uh, didn't like defense to about, probably I would say, honestly, to about like eighth or ninth grade. Uh, like eighth or ninth grade, and I finally fell in love with defense. But I was, I, was, uh, I was a running back. Going back to your high school days now, you're playing at Woodland Hills, which is known for producing NFL caliber talent. I mean, you have uh, players like Gronkowski coming out of there, Tommy Campbell used to go there now too, and uh, the Wolverine being one of the most exciting venues in uh, quad A football, arguably, in Western Pennsylvania. What's it like coming out of Woodland Hills and seeing all that NFL talent? Does, does it kind of give you a boost of confidence saying, there's a lot of guys coming out of this school that are going to the NFL, I got a really good chance at this? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, Woodland Hills is a college program itself in high school. You, you're trained to be prepared for anything after high school, and the transition was easy to come to college, actually, from. Uh, Every standpoint, even even for the schoolwork, but um, seeing guys like uh, you know Rob Gronkowski, Terrence Johnson as well, which is like my blood cousin, and playing football with them guys and knowing where my talent level is compared to theirs definitely is a boost, and um, it gives me confidence. I walk around with my head held high. Uh, I can honestly say years ago, even though I had to take a long path to get here, I always felt like I was going to be in the NFL. Didn't expect to go to the combine or get drafted, but just playing with them type of guys that are in the NFL right now, producing, I just. It, made, it definitely made it easy for me to know that I could reach this goal. In terms of uh, your drive here, Cal, you, we've seen it over the past four years. One of the more driven players we've seen come out of here, especially so far that we've seen on your path as well. Now, in terms of motivation, what's your key motivation? Now, you know, uh, USA Today had a story about uh, your brother, uh, Vondre Griffin, and how you re he really motivates you to play because eventually you want to be out on the same field as him out in the NFL one day. Um, but is, is he your key motivator? Is it family as well? Uh, family would definitely be my key motivator. Also, um, I can say the critics. I mean, I know you're not supposed to feed into it, but um, it definitely family motivates me every day. I do it for my family. I, I, I want to be the first one to accomplish the things I'm accomplishing now. So family pushes everything, but also the critics as well. Uh, how they talk about small school guys, he can't play, and not knowing that I was a Division One football player, I had Division One offers, grades just helped me back from getting there, and just dumb decisions as a, as a young minor, you know what I mean? And growing up on a, on a rough path, not being able to focus on places, having to set home, even have grades to even play football, and I had to miss my uh, eighth grade, my ninth grade year of football. So more the critics, they built the chip, and uh, I, I like to do it for a small school, small school uh, team, but my brother definitely is one of the key key points of why I drive so hard. And um, we played football since birth. We've been together our whole lives. Uh, different different mothers, same father, only two months apart. We grew up together playing football. And 
no matter what happened or no matter whatever came in our way, we both had our ass set on the same prize. We both played football. We continued to go to school, stayed out of trouble, and it became kind of like a crutch. Like, I could never look to the right and not worry about felon, because if he's still going, I know I could go. And uh, that drove me a long time. And even when the, the upcoming uh, situation that just happened, where I'm going to jail and everything going on with the case still right now, it just kind of like put me in a slump for a while, but he, continued to, he continues to motivate me. When we talk on the phone, he tell him, don't worry about him, keep doing it. He said, this is God's plan. God, God, this is God's way of showing that he's going to do any way, anything in my path to make sure that I'm, I believe in my dreams. And he gave me this talent. So he's definitely my key motivation at this point right now, him and my family. And he's your half brother, but you, you say he's just like a brother to you. You guys are literally like birth brothers. Nothing, there's nothing different. I, I think God blessed me to have somebody that's similar. I mean, if any argument came out of us, it was about a video game or, or joking around, but we never, we never fight. Our, our opinions are very the same. We think alike. He's never been in trouble due to the situation coming up. Um, it's just a blessing to have a twin brother that's not a full brother. And, um, like, I don't even think I have when I, when I think of my brother. And um, if y'all ever seen how he is, and if y'all ever had to get the chance to see him play farther on, I probably would have been just as amazed. I always lived in his shadow. You know, I, he was the star quarterback, throwing touchdown passes to Rob Gronkowski. Growing up Little League, star running back. You know what I mean? He was the guy, and I was the role player, but I was happy with that. I just wanted us both to be successful and take care of our family. But um, definitely, we're too similar, two peas in a pod, and it's just weird that God will bless you to have somebody that's similar to you. And when you get that call from uh, the NFL team, is he going to be one of the first persons you tell? Uh, I mean, if I'm able to, hopefully. I mean, he's, he hasn't called me first. I'm pretty sure he'll know when the date is. He'll call me. And, um, he'll find out as soon as possible. Every, every time he call me and not tell him news, he's happy for me. He's praying. And um, he's definitely going to be excited. And I hope, hopefully one day he can get out and still chase his dreams, even if it's not football, just being involved in football. So. And we talk about uh, D2 football and you're, you're at a smaller school. How important is it for you to kind of represent Cal U in a bigger spotlight in the NFL, like some of the past players, but you're one of the more highly touted players now coming out of Cal U? It's very important. Um, I love Cal U. I love Vulcans. Uh, I bleed red and black. Um, everything about the school represents who I am. Um, small, come from a small school, which represents me as not having been blessed with uh, some of the uh, stuff that some bigger schools guys had and going and getting more attention. and. Coach Luckhart and these guys did a good job of keeping us on TV, keeping people around, having great pro days. So I, it, it means a lot for me to represent California PA. And um, that chip I carry on my shoulder has something to do with being from Cal, and I continue to carry it. Even, even after this point right now, even if I do get drafted high or low, or no matter where they sign me at, I will always have a, a small school mentality and feel like I got to prove myself, like I want to be the best. And Cal has a lot to do with that. You mentioned Coach Lockhart there and everything. In terms of your relationships with your coaches and your teammates, uh, how big of a factor were they over your four years? I mean, you, you had some coaching changes. You had Lockhart uh, out this year, and then you had Coach Keller come in, who takes over as head coach this year, and uh, defensive coordinator Mike Conway uh, was with you your whole four years, but now he's getting ready to leave. But what, what was the relationships like that kind of built you into the football player you are today? Uh, uh, a family feel all the way. Um, when I first came here, I came here for the fact that I felt comfortable with the coaching staff. Um, that's one of the biggest things you want to do as an athlete when you're choosing this college to go to. You got to be comfortable with the coaches. Because no matter where you go, no matter how good the team is, if you and the coaches ain't on the same page and it's not a family vibe there, it's not going to work. But uh, my relationship with the coaches definitely been like uncles, big brothers, even father figures. And I, I didn't have that coming up like since two years old. My father's back in my life now more, but I didn't have that. 15, 16 years of my life. So um, it definitely put things in perspective. Uh, FCA, fellow Christian athletes, they got me involved in Bible studies. Um, they, helped me, they, they helped me grow from a boy to a man just over four years. Um, coach Keller as well, stepping in and being a head coach, his relationship was great. Uh, he, he treated me just how I felt like he should have. Um, we had a great relationship. He put a lot of weight on my shoulders to be you know, the head of the team and keep everything straight. And um, so same with Coach Luckhart. He put that faith in me only as a sophomore to be a uh, team captain. And so uh, the fact that them guys respected me and uh, put that much trust in me that early let me know that they trusted me and they believed in me as a family. So uh, them guys definitely mold me as a person, uh, not just a football player, but just a better person in general. And uh, I love them and I thank them all for that. Was it uh, difficult at all your freshman year? You were getting a significant amount of playing time too yeah. as a freshman. And we've seen the minutes, of course, add up and a starter over the four years there. What was it like just your first game here at Cal and getting in there and being uh, sitting back there, I think with Eric Harris. I was actually mad my freshman year. Um, 
I was like a buck 88, and I came in, and I remember um, there was a free safety and a Vulcan. Vulcan is more of the heavier, strong safety guys, you know what I mean? Free safety is more, more, more smaller, like a, like a, a deep corner. So um, I'm thinking I'm going to be a free safety, and they happened to move me to the Vulcan, like when, as soon as I got it. So it's a position I never played, never played in the box. I've always been out of the box. I was, we were in the same defense, but I was the deep safety. So uh, it was hard at first. It was hard. I had to learn. I looked at kind of like uncoordinated. I didn't know how to do the drops and wasn't used to reading the ball from where I was at. As soon as we put the pads on, everything changed. Uh, first game came, I really didn't get that many snaps. Um, I guess they were worried. I've been, been two years since I played football, and Coach Conway was more worried. And um, Coach Cole, the defensive back coach, was trying to say, like, we got to at least give him a shot, see what he could do. So second game, they came, and they told me I was going to rotate with Eric Harris. And uh, funny thing, man, Eric Harris, like, the best of friends now, but we didn't get along the first year. He felt like I was trying to take something from him. And um, they, Bloomsburg, second game of the season, was actually the first game I really got to play. Um, man, it was like it was like heaven all over. It was like love all over again. Um, ended up having one of the best games out of, out of the defenders that year. And after that, it just took a turn for the best. Uh, by the third, fourth game, I was actually starting over E. Harris. And um, they seen that E. Harris had to play as well, so they started both of us. That's when we went to the nickel package. So definitely my freshman year is it's like how I feel right now. Like after your freshman year, everything starts to slow down and you get used to it. And um, kind of got complacent a little bit. Sometimes I got, I was in the game, say we playing Lock Haven or somebody, I would kind of get like bored a little bit. No plays would happen, no plays would get that deep. And I was just getting in the phase like, dang, like I don't know what's going on. And I'm kind of mad, kind of bored, like kind of, I, I don't want to be selfish, but I, I love football that much that I have to be involved to feel good. And um, my freshman year was like, going to the NFL combat in college, like starting all over again, starting fresh. Even at the Texas versus the Nation game, it's just, it's the best feeling in the world. And you got more vocal too over your four year progression here. And you mentioned being a captain. Does that come with a lot of responsibility? Of course it does as being a captain and running the defense, but you're getting some players like Eric Harris, who you came in and started playing with. But then you see some of the top players go out, like Harris. They graduate, and then you get a player like this past season and C.J. Towns back there with you. What's it like just being the leader of that defense, but also trying to train these new players coming up as well? Uh, I take it head on, and I actually love football enough to where I put in extra hours. Uh, I consider myself a coach on the field, and even without football right now, I will go home right now and watch film and like look, I brought the highlight tape to you, and I know plays and. Just write down formations. This is a, something that's natural to me, and I, I actually liked it. I enjoy coaching the new guys. And C.J. Towns, he's a natural when it comes to his knowledge of football. It, it was beyond. It was easy for, to teach him everything, and he caught on faster than honestly any DB other than E. Harris and the Sean A's and the Pat Swearingers that've been here. For him to come back and just hop on the field out of four years, and it was easy for me to coach him. But um. You know, there's a little, there's a little stuff you got to build off with the younger guys, and just more about confidence-wise. But far as mental, the mental aspect, most of them guys was uh, quick learners, fast learners, and they made my job a little easier. And they may have taken a page out of your book too. Maybe going on in uh, the next couple of years, you're known as a big explosive hitter. That, that's what you're known for. Do you think? Do you think that comes as a good or bad thing? Maybe for NFL scouts looking at you, um, in terms of. This guy, could he be an injury risk if he's out there making these big pops on these guys? But that's the way you play. Do you plan on changing that at all, maybe, when you get into the NFL? Or is that what you go with? That's what you're wanting them to see, be like, I, I can add some pop, I can add some explosiveness. I don't think I could change it if I tried. That's, yeah. um, that's just something that I've been this way since I ever played a helmet on. That's like like you said, when I first started playing defense, I was like in eighth, ninth grade. And first time I got to hit somebody, it was a big hit. And the feeling I got from it is just amazing. I can't help that. Um, Definitely not going to change how I play. I'm not, I usually don't hit helmet to helmet, though. I think I'm very smart on how I tackle. Um, but a lot of scouts from the uh, Texas versus Nation game had told me that they, they love how I play. They love how physical I am. They love how I attack the ball. They, my passion, they said they, they could see the passion in my game and they could tell that I have a chip on my shoulder. So I don't think I could change it if even, even if I tried. So it's definitely what I bring to the table is being aggressive. And um, I like to be terrifying. I like to I like to strike fear in people. It make it makes the tackle easier, actually. So I, I think you were able to do that over the last couple of years. <laughs> you definitely uh, put some scare into some people, and you mentioned it too. You're probably one of the safest tacklers for big hit tacklers because I don't think I've ever seen one play where it was an illegal helmet to helmet. You took a dirty shot at right. someone. They're they're all clean tackles too, and it also comes into the fact too. 
you're not hurting yourself in terms of injury risk either because you're making these safe tackles. You're not hurting yourself. You're not hurting the other player. You're just adding a lot of explosive pop. Right. Never had a concussion. Uh, never had no head damage from tackling. I don't hit with my helmet. Honestly, if you ever see the film, I hit with my shoulders. I rap a lot. Uh, a lot of shoulder action, I would say. But helmet, never know helmets to helmets. And I'm, I take pride in that. I, uh, my first year here, I was a Vulcan. Like I said, I was an outside linebacker. So I was in position where I had an open field tackle a lot. And it just made it easier when I got 15 yards off the ball, just more explosive. So I feel like, I, I feel like I'm found where I'm at as far as tackling. Well, in another explosive format, too, you played some special teams over these couple years, too. And we're seeing in the NFL, too, that's becoming a big part of the game, especially for pl younger players coming into the NFL, especially in their first year, too. And with the experience that you've got here at Cal U on special teams, do you think teams could utilize you at the special teams position on kickoffs? And do you think you'd uh, do well in that spot? Yes, uh, that's another thing they brought up a lot. Um, uh, they like that I play special teams. And honestly, I love special teams. I mean, it's all football. At the end of the day, every, every aspect of the game is to help you win. If I had to play special teams my first year and I had to just do that, I think I'd do it, and I'd just strap from being the best special teams player on the team, and I, I would look forward to doing that. I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, as long as I could strap up and go out there and play football, it doesn't matter where I end up or what round, I just want to play ball. So special teams definitely is a part of my game that I take very seriously. Okay, and you mentioned, too, you played Vulcan, you played free safety and everything. What if a team coming up in the draft, they took you, and they want to try and transition you into another position. Would you be open to possibly may, say they want you to drop back as a defensive back in a cornerback slot role, or they want you just playing off the ball or just special teams, as we mentioned? Would you be open to playing a different position if they wanted to transition you? Yes, I think I'm, I'm an easier adjuster. I'm, like I said, I know a lot about football. I played all three safety positions here as well. Never really played corner, but if, if they feel like I could play there and I could benefit the team, of course, I'll do, I'll do anything to win. And I'll do anything to play football at the next level. I want to prove to everybody that I can play ball, and I feel like I will be better than a lot of guys coming out. So anything, anywhere they put me, as long as they give me a helmet, I'm ready to go. I, I know we mentioned this before, too, but you get in the NFL, you're on a team. What's that one player you're looking to get your first hit on? I, I, I know you mentioned Gronkowski as an old teammate, uh, but yeah. it, it, is there any other players you'd be out there just looking, maybe a quarterback, you'd be like, get a, your first sack against? Honestly, I feel like um, a lot of respect would come come my way if I hit somebody like Adrian Peterson or or catch somebody like that or Ray Rice. Some guys that are are, are known as dom like dominating running backs, physical, fast, strong, and I want to be in a position hopefully one day to, to show everybody that I can make that tackle and I can play. And once they see that one or two times, they're like, okay, maybe this kid can play. Let's give him more 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 time. And a lot of guys are like, oh, you gonna have to tackle him if you get in there. And Brandon Jacobs, are you scared? Like I. Uh, I don't see no numbers, I don't see no names when you're on the field. Maybe if you're just watching it from the outside looking in, of course, but when I'm on the field, I don't see a number, I don't see a name, I just see a ball carrier. So I'm looking forward to uh, going against them guys if I get the chance. In terms of a draft, what, what's your plans? Do you plan on sitting around back home having a party with family? Do you plan on being out there in New York uh, for the draft? What, what, what do you have planned up for the draft? Uh, like I said about the attention thing, I'm very, um, I, I don't mind it, but I'm kind of still trying to get used to it. I don't want to draw too much attention. I might just go be home with my mother, you know, cook some food, uh, just chill and watch TV, watch it on TV as well. And that's about it. I know a lot of people have been calling me and saying you're going to get drafted. And I'm like, you can't just say anything. The draft is one of the craziest, craziest things in the world dealing with the NFL. You never know what could happen in the draft. Uh, it's like a lot, winning the lottery, so you never know. So. I feel like I told a lot of my friends, don't worry, buddy. Y'all can go celebrate, do what y'all want to, but I'm going to just uh, stay with my mother. We're going to stay in the house and just watch TV. Is there a specific team that you would like to have pick you up? I know, of course, you'd want to go into the draft and have anyone uh, take you, whoever can, but is there one team primarily, maybe like the Steelers' local team, to keep you around? I love, I mean, I love, I love Pittsburgh, Steelers with all my heart. They're, they're watching their football growing up, kind of mold me into a player that I am too as well. I can honestly say that, but um, if I can say there's three teams I like, I like I like Baltimore, I like the Patriots, and I like the Steelers. They are contenders, and their defense has always been solid. But um, like you said, it wouldn't matter. But they would be my three teams I would love to play for. And, uh, they have a shot to go deep into the season, playoffs, and just contribute how, however I can. So it would be my three teams. Lastly, for younger kids, whether it's pee wee football, whether it's high school football right now, what advice would you give them? Uh, if they want to be in the position you are right now, getting a chance to go into the NFL, live your dreams, and play professional football? Uh, I would tell them 
definitely able to tell them, write your own story. Um, a lot of people is going to count you. A lot of people is going to have their own opinion about what you can do, how good you are. And I wouldn't do that myself by leaving a Division One school to come here. And a lot of people said I messed up my chances. But I always had it in my head that if you stick with it and you write your own story, don't let nobody else be the holder of your pen writing your story. You're going to be fine. Stick with it and write your own story. It's only over when you let it be. And uh, I'm living proof of that.